Are you prepared to become a prophet today? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. God sends His prophets to give the world His message in every century. St. Oscar Romero, St. Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa canonized October 4, 2016 by Pope Francis, Pope St. John Paul II, Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, Martin Luther King, Fanny Lou Hammer, Dom Helder Camera, Maura Clark, Dorothy Kazel, Ita Ford, Jean Donovan, and Ella Baker were all 20th century prophets who had the courage of their Christian convictions to follow Jesus and proclaim His undiluted message which cast fire on earth and caused healthy division in the society as today's gospel points out. In 1980, in the midst of a U.S.-funded genocidal war against the so-called leftist rebels in El Salvador, Archbishop St. Oscar Romero, who sided with the poor exploited farm workers, declared, If they kill all your priests and the bishop too, each one of you must become God's microphone. Each one of you must become a prophet. I do not believe in death without resurrection. If they kill me, I will be resurrected in the Salvadoran people. Amid overarching violence, Romero wrote to President Jimmy Carter pleading with him to cease sending military aid to the brutal military regime because he wrote, It is being used to repress my people. The U.S. sent $1.5 million in aid every day for 12 years. Archbishop Romero's letter went unheeded. Two months later, he was assassinated. Ending a long homily addressed to the pro-government landowners and peasants and the military and broadcast throughout the country, his voice rose to breaking. Brothers, you are from the same people. You kill your fellow peasants. No soldier is obliged to obey an order that is contrary to the will of God. There was thunderous applause. He was inviting the army to mutiny. Then his voice burst out. In the name of God then, in the name of this suffering people, I ask you, I beg you, I command you, in the name of God, stop the repression. Oscar Romero gave his last homily on March 24, 1980, moments before a sharpshooter felt him at the altar of a hospital chapel. Reflecting on the day's scripture, he had said, One must not love oneself so much as to avoid getting involved in the risks of life that history demands of us and those that fend off danger will lose their lives. In an interview as he was flying to Brazil in May 2007, Pope Benedict XVI told the reporters, Romero as a person merits beatification. In July 2007, the new Salvadoran conservative government said it would formally request the Vatican to beatify Romero, although it would not accept responsibility for his slaying. Pope Francis beatified the martyred Archbishop Romero on May 23, 2015. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus talks about enduring suffering if we are to follow Him and how this may be a cause of division, especially within and among families. It seems especially confusing when Jesus said, I have come not to bring peace but division. But looking around us, we have seen the breaking up of friendships and families because of religion. At the Last Supper, Jesus told His disciples that He was giving them peace, a peace that the world could not give, a peace that no one could take away from them. In His Sermon on the Mount, He said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Once family is a source of personal identity and protection, a support system greater than external friendships. To separate oneself from one's family was a matter of life and death. But Christianity broke up families, for members had to choose. Heated arguments can ensue between those who believe and non-believers in the same blood or faith family. Today's gospel challenges us to put God first in all that we do. Then Jesus say that the first great commandment is to love Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? And then as an expression of our love for Him, and because of that love, we must and should love our neighbor as ourselves. And therefore, we must first seek His kingdom. That is why prophets today are unpopular as Jeremiah was in the first reading. He was predicting the impending destruction of Jerusalem because most of the kings of Judah had become more distanced from God and from their religion as they chose to enter into unholy alliances with neighboring countries than trusting God. 
He was dropped in an unused muddy cistern to die when the Lord God, through Jeremiah, ordered the king and the military leaders to surrender and pay tribute to the Babylonians. This displeased the military leaders who labeled Jeremiah as an unpatriotic treason. We have Jeremiahs in our midst. We are also called to be a Jeremiah to others too, speaking only of the truth and holding steadfastly to our faith at risk of unpopularity, persecution, and suffering. For instance, the late Archbishop Helder Camara, the champion of Brazil's poor, gave a prophetic warning to all members of the church. When I give bread to the poor, they call me a saint. But when I ask why the poor have no bread, they call me a communist. We are all called not to be popular, but to speak about the truth and to boldly proclaim our faith, risking our reputation and our relationships in the name of Jesus. And what is our just reward? Peace. An internal peace that rests on the God who promised us His kingdom, an indescribable place of unending joy. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Grant me clarity on what my mission in life is. I ask for wisdom and a steadfast spirit to face those who oppose you and to have peace in my heart, knowing that I am yours. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.